This is a recording of an article on Wikipedia and was recorded by user Popular Outcast. The material recorded is current as of the August 15, 2017 revision of the article. Pigeon Photography from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. The search term pigeon camera redirects here. For the song by the band The Tragically Hip, see the article titled Fully, Completely. Pigeon photography is an aerial photography technique invented in 1907 by the German apothecary Julius Neubronner, who also used pigeons to deliver medications. A homing pigeon was fitted with an aluminum breast harness to which a lightweight, time-delayed miniature camera could be attached. Neubronner's German patent application was initially rejected, but was granted in December 1908 after he produced authenticated photographs taken by his pigeons. He publicized the technique at the 1909 Dresden International Photographic Exhibition and sold some images as postcards at the Frankfurt International Aviation Exhibition and at the 1910 and 1911 Paris Air Shows. Initially, the military potential of pigeon photography for aerial reconnaissance appeared attractive. Battlefield tests in the First World War provided encouraging results, but the ancillary technology of mobile dovecotes for messenger pigeons had the greatest impact. Owing to the rapid perfection of aviation during the war, military interest in pigeon photography faded, and Neubronner abandoned his experiments. The idea was briefly resurrected in the 1930s by a Swiss clockmaker and reportedly also by the German and French militaries. Although war pigeons were deployed extensively during the Second World War, it is unclear to what extent, if any, birds were involved in aerial reconnaissance. The United States Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, later developed a battery-powered camera designed for espionage pigeon photography. Details of its use remain classified. The construction of sufficiently small and light cameras with a timer mechanism and the training and handling of the birds to carry the necessary loads presented major challenges, as did the limited control over the pigeon's position, orientation, and speed when the photographs were being taken. In 2004, the British Broadcasting Corporation, or BBC, used miniature television cameras attached to falcons and goshawks to obtain live footage, and today some researchers, enthusiasts, and artists similarly deploy critter cams with various species of animals. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Pigeon with German Miniature Camera, probably taken during the First World War. The following is a listing of the contents of this article. Section 1. Origins. Section 2. Julius Neubronner. Section 3. First World War. Section 4. Second World War. Section 5. After the Second World War. Section 6. Notes. Section 7. Further reading. Section 8. External links. Section 1. Origins The first aerial photographs were taken in 1858 by the balloonist Nadar. In 1860, James Wallace Black took the oldest surviving aerial photographs, also from a balloon. As photographic techniques made further progress, at the end of the 19th century, some pioneers placed cameras in unmanned flying objects. In the 1880s, Arthur Batute experimented with kite aerial photography. Many others followed him, and high-quality photographs of Boston taken with this method by William Abner Eddy in 1896 became famous. Amity Denise equipped a rocket with a camera and a parachute in 1888, and Alfred Nobel also used rocket photography in 1897. Homing pigeons were used extensively in the 19th and early 20th centuries, both for civil pigeon post and as war pigeons. 
In the Franco Prussian War of 1870 the famous pigeon post of Paris carried up to 50,000 microfilm telegrams per pigeon flight from Tours into the besieged capital. Altogether, 150,000 individual private telegrams and state dispatches were delivered. In an 1889 experiment of the Imperial Russian Technical Society at St. Petersburg, the chief of the Russian Balloon Corps took aerial photographs from a balloon and sent the developed collodion film negatives to the ground by pigeon post. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, four-year-old homing pigeon that made fifteen ascents in a balloon section two julius neubronner in nineteen o three julius neubronner an apothecary in the german town of kromberg near frankfurt resumed a practice begun by his father half a century earlier and received prescriptions from a sanatorium in nearby falkenstein via pigeon post the pigeon post was discontinued after three years when the sanatorium was closed he delivered urgent medications up to seventy five grams by the same method and positioned some of his pigeons with his wholesaler in frankfurt to profit from faster deliveries himself when one of his pigeons lost its orientation in fog and mysteriously arrived well fed four weeks late neubronner was inspired with the playful idea of equipping his pigeons with automatic cameras to trace their paths this thought led him to merge his two hobbies into a new double sport combining carrier pigeon fancying with amateur photography neubronner later learned that his pigeon had been in the custody of a restaurant chef in wiesbaden after successfully testing a tickle watch camera on a train and whilst riding a sled neubronner began the development of a light miniature camera that could be fitted to a pigeon's breast by means of a harness and an aluminum cuirass using wooden camera models which weighed thirty to seventy five grams the pigeons were carefully trained for their load to take an aerial photograph neubronner carried a pigeon to a location up to about a hundred kilometers from its home where it was equipped with a camera and released the bird keen to be relieved of its burden would typically fly home on a direct route at a height of fifty to a hundred meters a pneumatic system in the camera controlled the time delay before a photograph was taken to accommodate the burdened pigeon the dovecoat had a spacious elastic landing board and a large entry hole an image accompanies this section of the article with the caption julius neubronner nineteen fourteen another image accompanies this section of the article with the caption top left aerial photographs of schloss hotel kronberg bottom left and center frankfurt right pigeons fitted with cameras according to neubronner there were a dozen different models of his camera in nineteen o seven he had sufficient success to apply for a patent initially his invention quote, method of and means for taking photographs of landscapes from above end quote, was rejected by the german patent office as impossible but after presentation of authenticated photographs the patent was granted in december nineteen o eight the rejection was based on a misconception about the carrying capacity of domestic pigeons the technology became widely known through new bronner's participation in the nineteen o nine international photographic exhibition in dresden and the nineteen o nine international aviation exhibition in frankfurt spectators in dresden could watch the arrival of the pigeons and the aerial photographs they brought back were turned into postcards neubronner's photographs won prizes in dresden as well as at the nineteen ten and nineteen eleven paris air shows a photograph of the schloss hotel kronberg became famous due to its accidental inclusion of the photographer's wingtips in a breach of copyright it was shown in german cinemas as part of the weekly newsreel in nineteen twenty nine in a short book published in nineteen o nine neubronner described five camera models one 
The double camera described in the patent had two lenses pointing in opposite directions, forward and backward, each with a focal length of 40 millimeters. Operated by a single focal plane shutter, the camera could take two simultaneous glass plate exposures at a time determined by the pneumatic system. 2. A stereoscopic camera had similar characteristic, but both lenses pointed in the same direction. 3. One model was capable of transporting film and taking several exposures in a row. 4. One model had its lens fixed to a bag bellows. A scissor mechanism held the bellows in its expanded state until the photo was taken, but condensed it immediately afterwards. This allowed one exposure of size 6 cm by 9 cm on a photographic plate at a focal length of 85 mm. 5. In a panoramic camera, the focal plane shutter was replaced by a rotation of 180 degrees of the lens itself. This model was the basis for the Doppel Sport panoramic camera, which Neubronner tried to market around 1910. It captured a panoramic view on 3 cm by 8 cm film. It never went into serial production, though. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Top, sectional view of patented pigeon camera with two lenses. Bottom, pneumatic system. The camera was activated by inflating the chamber on the left. As the air slowly escaped through the capillary at the bottom, the piston moved back towards the left until it triggered the exposure. In a 1920 pamphlet, Neubronner described his last model as weighing slightly more than 40 grams and being capable of taking 12 exposures. In 2007, a researcher remarked that only little technical information is available about lenses, shutters, and the speed of the photographic media, but reported that Neubronner obtained the film for his panoramic camera from ADOX. For this camera, he estimated a film speed of ISO 25 by 15 degrees to 40 by 17 degrees, and a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second to 1 100th of a second. The film was cut to the format 30 millimeters by 60 millimeters and bent into a concave shape to prevent unnecessary distortion due to the half circle movement of the lens. In 1920, Neubronner found that ten years of hard work and considerable expenses had been rewarded only with his inclusion in encyclopedias and the satisfaction that an ancillary technology, the mobile dovecote, had proved its worth in the war. Neubronner's panoramic camera is displayed at the German Museum of Technology in Berlin and the Deutsche Museum in Munich. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, The Patented Camera with Cuirass and Harness. Section 3. First World War Neubronner's invention was at least partially motivated by the prospect of military applications. At the time, photographic aerial reconnaissance was possible but cumbersome, as it involved balloons, kites, or rockets. The Wright brothers' successful flight in 1903 presented new possibilities, and surveillance aircraft were introduced and perfected during the First World War. But pigeon-based photography, despite its practical difficulties, promised to deliver complementary, detailed photographs taken from a lower height. The Prussian War Ministry was interested, but some initial skepticism could only be overcome through a series of successful demonstrations. The pigeons proved relatively indifferent to explosions, but during battle a dovecote may need to be moved, and pigeons can take some time to orient to their new position. The problem of making carrier pigeons accept a displaced dovecote with only a minimum of retraining had been tackled with some success by the Italian army around 1880. The French artillery Captain Reynaud solved it by raising the pigeons in an itinerant dovecote. There is no indication that Neubronner was aware of this work, but he knew there must be a solution as he had heard of an itinerant fairground worker who was also a pigeon fancier with a dovecote in his trailer. 
at the nineteen o nine exhibitions in dresden and frankfort he presented a small carriage that combined a dark room with a mobile dovecote in flashy colors in months of laborious work he trained young pigeons to return to the dovecote even after it was displaced an image accompanies this section of the article with the caption new Bronner's mobile dovecote and dark room as shown at nineteen o nine exhibitions in nineteen twelve new Bronner completed his tasks set in nineteen o nine of photographing the waterworks at tejo using only his mobile dovecote almost ten years of negotiations were scheduled to end in august nineteen fourteen with a practical test at a maneuver in strasburg followed by the state's acquisition of the invention these plans were thwarted by the outbreak of the war new Bronner had to provide all his pigeons and equipment to the military which tested them in the battlefield with satisfactory results but did not employ the technique more widely instead under the novel conditions of attrition warfare war pigeons in their traditional role as pigeon posts saw a renaissance new Bronner's mobile dovecote found its way to the battle of Verdun where it proved so advantageous that similar facilities were used on a larger scale in the battle of the somme after the war the war ministry responded to new Bronner's inquiry to the effect that the use of the pigeons in aerial photography had no military value and further experiments were not justified the international spy museum in washington d c has a small room dedicated to carrier pigeons and pigeon photography in the first world war section four second world war despite the war ministry's position immediately after the first world war in nineteen thirty two it was reported that the german army was training pigeons for photography and that the german pigeon cameras were capable of two hundred exposures per flight in the same year the french claimed that they had developed film cameras for pigeons as well as a method for having the birds released behind enemy lines by trained dogs although war pigeons and mobile dovecotes were used extensively during the second world war it is unclear to what extent if any they were employed for aerial photography according to a report in nineteen forty two the soviet army discovered abandoned german trucks with pigeon cameras that could take photos in five-minute intervals as well as dogs trained to carry pigeons in baskets on the allied side as late as nineteen forty three it was reported that the american signal corps was aware of the possibility of adopting the technique it is certain however that during the second world war pigeon photography was introduced into german nurseries in toy form from around nineteen thirty five the toy figures produced under the brand elastilin some of which show motifs from before nineteen eighteen with updated uniforms began to include a signal corps soldier with a pigeon transport dog the figurine represents a soldier in the act of releasing a pigeon that carries an oversized pigeon camera this section of the article contains an image with the caption german toy soldier with camera pigeon thanks to research conducted by the swiss camera museum at vevey much more is known about the pigeon cameras developed at about the same time by the swiss clockmaker christian adrian michel in Valde. he was assigned to the swiss army's carrier pigeon service in nineteen thirty one and in nineteen thirty three he began work on adapting new Bronner's panoramic camera to sixteen millimeter film and improving it with a mechanism to control the delay before the first exposure and to transport the film between exposures michel's camera patented in nineteen thirty seven weighed only seventy grams and may have been one of the first to have a timer operated by clockwork michel's plan to sell his camera to the swiss army failed as he was unable to find a manufacturer to produce it in quantity only about a hundred of his cameras were constructed after the outbreak of the second world war michel patented a shell and harness for the transport of items such as film rolls by carrier pigeon between two thousand and two and two thousand and seven three of his cameras were auctioned by christie's in london 
An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Michelle created an operating manual but could not find a production partner before the outbreak of the Second World War. The Swiss Camera Museum at Vevey holds around a thousand photographs taken for test purposes during the development of Michelle's camera. Most of the photos were taken with 16 mm orthopanchromatic AGFA film with a speed of ISO 8 tenths degrees. The exposed format was 10 mm by 34 mm. The quality was sufficient for a tenfold magnification. In the catalog of the 2007 exhibition, Pigeon Photographers, they are classified as test photos on the ground or from a window, human perspectives from the ground or from elevated points, aeroplane-based aerial photographs, aerial photographs of relatively high altitude that were probably taken by pigeons released from a plane, and only a small number of typical pigeon photographs. An image accompanies this section of the article with the caption, Drawing from Swiss Patent. Section 5. After the Second World War The United States Central Intelligence Agency, or CIA, developed a battery-powered pigeon camera now on display in the CIA Museum's virtual tour. According to the website, the details of the camera's use are still classified. News reports suggest that the camera was used in the 1970s, that the pigeons were released from planes, and that it was a failure. In 1978, the Swiss magazine, The Illustrated, printed an aerial photograph of a street in Basel, taken by a pigeon of Febo de Vries Baumann, equipped with a camera with a hydraulic mechanism. In 2002-2003, the performance artist and pigeon fancier Amos Latier experimented with pigeon photography using Advanced Photo System, or APS, and digital cameras and turned the result into PowerPointalist lecture performances in Portland, Oregon. In a 2008 film adaptation of Sleeping Beauty by the German director Arend Agthe, the prince invents pigeon photography and discovers Sleeping Beauty on a photo taken by a pigeon. In the 1980s, a small number of high-quality replica Doppelsport cameras were made by Rolf Oberlander. One was acquired in 1999 by the Swiss Camera Museum in Vevey. Modern technology allows extension of the principle to video cameras. In the 2004 BBC program Animal Camera, Steve Leonard presented spectacular films taken by miniature television cameras attached to eagles, falcons, and goshawks, transmitted to a nearby receiver by microwaves. The cameras have a weight of 28 grams. Miniature digital audio players with built-in video cameras can also be attached to pigeons. In 2009, researchers made news when a peer-reviewed article discussed the insights they gain by attaching cameras to albatrosses. The lipstick-sized cameras took a photo every 30 seconds. Cameras have also been attached to other animals such as cats and dogs. There are references available in the written form of this article, including suggestions for further reading. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or cross-referencing the information yourself. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU Free Documentation License, available at www.gnu.org slash copy left slash fdl dot html.